We're already seeing the early beginnings of tech that has the potential to replace smartphones. Today, nearly 8 in 10 Americans own a smartphone, and we become accustomed to using them for everything, from listening to music, taking pictures, and posting on social media, to shopping and making financial transactions. Smartphones have transformed everyday life so much that it's easy to forget that they only became popular a little more than 10 years ago. That's when Apple released the iPhone, which combined mobile internet access and computing power with a multi-touch screen interface, making it possible to do pretty much everything by tapping, flicking and pinching with the thumb and forefinger. According to a recent survey, smartphone users now spend about 5 hours a day using their devices, which is well over 20% of the day, every day. Think about it, if you eliminate 8 hours for sleeping time, you spend over 30% of your waking hours staring at pixels changing colors on a supposedly smart phone. Indeed, it's hard to envision a world without smartphones, yet that may really be the case in a couple of decades. Which leads to the big question, what's going to replace the smartphone? Just before we move on, can you hit that subscribe button? We have a goal to reach 5,000 subscribers before August 2021. And with your help, we can definitely do it. Advances in technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence and wearable electronics will spawn a new generation of devices that could change our everyday existence, even more than the smartphone did. The transition we're about to experience is that we're going to go from accessing the internet to living in the internet explains Jack Aldrich, a futurist, author, and speaker. We don't yet have a suitably Zeitgeist way name for those gadgets, but it's quite a safe bet to say they won't be palm-sized rectangles with glass screens, or any screen at all, for that matter. And they may not even be a single gadget. Brad Behrens, chief strategy officer for the Center for the Digital Future, predicts that the smartphone will give way to personal area networks. Clusters of tiny gadgets concealed in beads in a necklace, or built into eyeglasses, or contact lenses. Such devices will use virtual reality and augmented reality to project information into our field of vision, eliminating the need for a screen. And just as we control apps on today's smartphones by moving our fingers, we'll be able to manipulate our next generation personal area networks through voice commands or by gesturing in the air. Perhaps with the help of haptic technology that stimulates the sensory feedback of touching actual objects. But increasingly, we won't have to input as much information as we once did, because next generation intelligent assistants, imagine a vastly more intuitive version of Siri, Alexa or Cortana, will learn to figure out what we want to know or do, sometimes before we realize it ourselves. Imagine a pair of smart glasses that allow you to do all those things your smartphone would with ease either by tracking the movement of your pupils or through bone conduction technology. Check emails, send messages, play games, take calls and photos, all from your glasses. Now imagine that they can also provide real-time information on the things you're looking at right in front of you, like the kind of thing you see in spy movies. Ulrich predicts that in the near future, our personal gadgetry will study our eye movements in order to make predictions. If we stare at something for 2 seconds, it will tell that we need more information about it, he says. Behrens envisions that the intelligent assistants of the future will continually whisper in our ears and project messages that only we can see. Many huge tech companies have already begun devoting a huge chunk of their research efforts into innovations in this area. Companies like Facebook, Microsoft and Google are working on their own standalone AR headsets that will be able to project 3D images into your eyes. Even Apple CEO Tim Cook has teased the possibility of Apple glasses. Let's move on from the augmented reality to the even more immersive virtual reality. Virtual reality headsets have already come in leaps and bounds from the early novelty models we saw a few years ago. But there's a long way to go from here. Futurists hope that the tech will one day grow so advanced that it will be difficult to distinguish the virtual reality from the real reality. In this ideal, virtual reality wouldn't just influence what you see and hear, but would hijack all your other senses too. For example, full body virtual reality suits are already under development, which will allow you to feel in virtual reality. The suits give you biofeedback so that you really feel what's happening as if it were real. If you can imagine combining that with some form of movement pads that let you walk around in a virtual space, we could have a whole virtual playground at our fingertips. 
if this kind of tech were widely available and anyone could access the virtual space, smartphones would soon become redundant. Instead of using a smartphone, you could simply step into a world in which you can interact physically with the emails, games and everything else. It might seem like science fiction right now, but who knows what will happen in the years to come. The other technological innovation that may replace smartphones is also the scariest. We're talking about human-machine fusion, biological upgrades that turn us into something more than human, cyborg tech, if you will. Elon Musk's Neuralink company has already begun developing such technology. The company's goal is to build computers into our very brains via neural lace. It's in the very earliest stages of development but hopes to eventually be able to bridge the brain to a computer. With these brain implants, we'd be able to browse the internet, read emails, make calls and anything else directly in our minds. In fact, if you want to know how they're doing, have a look at this. To control his paddle on the right side of the screen, Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. We've removed the joystick altogether. As you can see, Pager is amazingly good at mind pop. He's focused and he's playing entirely of his own volition. It's not magic. The reason Neuralink works is because it's recording and decoding electrical signals from the brain. They have literally made it possible for a monkey to play game with his brain. This would make the need for any kind of interface, including smartphones, redundant. In that sense, it would be the end point of technological evolution. Screens would become irrelevant and humans themselves would become one with machines. It's a thought that's as scary as it is exciting. But next generation personal devices may also change us in other ways that we haven't yet envisioned. As with the smartphone, we'll have to start using them to find out.